Every single year, as many as 2,000 species are declared extinct worldwide. But what if I told you that just because a species is declared extinct, it doesn't mean it's truly gone. It happens all the time. Animals are rediscovered that were thought to be gone forever. In fact, I found eight myself. So today, I'm gonna to be telling you about five more supposed extinct animals that I think could still be out there. First up, a giant bear with silver fur that used to once roam the vast pine forests of northern Mexico, the Mexican grizzly bear. A cousin of the American grizzly bear, the Mexican grizzly was native to Mexico and also used to range up into Baja, California, a place I'm very familiar with. It was different from its North American cousin as its fur color varied from pale buff yellow to white, which would appear silver in bright sunlight. This is why locally it was called el oso platido, which means the silvery bear in Spanish. Sadly, like all rare or supposed extinct animals, it faced a grim fate at the hands of hunters. With its once expansive range reduced to just three isolated mountain ranges by the 1960s. At this time, only a mere 30 individuals remained clinging desperately to survival despite being protected. Yet relentless hunting pressure drove the Mexican grizzly bear to extinction, with the last confirmed sighting occurring in 1964. But hold on to your horses, or bears should I add, because the tale doesn't end there. A few years later, Sonoran farmers started speaking of their livestock disappearing under mysterious circumstances. They brushed it off as the work of coyotes or mountain lions, but a pivotal moment in 1976 changed everything. A Mexican grizzly bear declared extinct 12 years prior was shot and killed by a hunter. What? This just goes to show that when we think we know everything, the reality is we really don't. Think about it. In a place as vast as Mexico, a single Mexican grizzly was able to persist even after its reported extinction. So what's to say that more couldn't be out there today? Speaking of, even to this day, rumors swirl of surviving bears taking refuge on a heavily guarded gigantic ranch near the Yaqui River. Now, I've actually had a guy reach out and tell me that his livestock has been killed by a large silvery bear in the area, but we haven't had the means by which to go down there because one, it's kind of a difficult and dangerous area, and two, the guy that I was talking to actually died. So it makes it very, very difficult to gain access to this giant private ranch, but who knows, maybe one day we'll be able to get down there. In addition to the fact that there's banditos and cartel, pursuing an 800 pound elusive bear through these rugged landscapes presents a formidable challenge, and it's something that I would absolutely love to do, yet it'd be an expedition driven by the hope that perhaps, just perhaps, the Mexican grizzly bear still roams the wilds of Mexico. So on a scale of one to 10, I think that the likelihood of the Mexican grizzly bear's rediscovery is pegged at a relatively low three out of 10. Mountain ghost bears are one thing, but picture a majestic alien looking pig with pale gray skin, long golden hair, with large tusks protruding from both its upper and lower jaws. Sounds like something out of a Star Wars movie, yeah? You wouldn't be wrong for thinking that, but it's a real life animal that has eluded Western scientists for century. Which brings me to number two on the list, the Moluccan Barbarossa. Well, although it looks like a straight up cryptid pig, little is known about the Moluccan Barbarossa because it's never been observed by Western eyes. However, as settlers encroached upon its habitat in Indonesia, this weird pig faced increasing threats to its survival. Deforestation and hunting pressure took their toll, pushing this elusive species to the very brink of extinction. Our knowledge of this creature comes solely from museum specimens collected by adventurers decades ago. Despite the challenges it faced, the Moluccan Barbarossa's legacy lives on in the stories and legends passed down by the indigenous people of Indonesia. Tales of sightings in the dense forests and rugged hills of the islands where the Barbarossa is said to roam in secrecy have persisted through generations. But why do I believe this creature could still exist today? Well, the fact that parts of Indonesia are just so remote and inaccessible would provide a ton of ample hiding spots for a creature keen to stay hidden. Additionally, reports from locals who claim to have seen or heard the Barbarossa in the wild 
offer tantalizing hints of its continued presence. One particularly interesting legend tells of a daring hunter who captured a live pair of Moluccan Barbarossa to present as gifts to neighboring islands. However, the creatures managed to slip away into the wilderness, evading capture. As we all know, at times the locals seem to know way more than scientists that just sit in their office all day long. We've seen this with tons of rediscovered species, where local indigenous people have been telling tales of their existence, and Western science has ruled it off as folklore. This could just be another one of those instances. And to find out if these legends are indeed fact or fiction, I'd love to embark on a journey deep into the heart of the Indonesian wilderness, trekking through the dense forests and rugged terrain, searching for signs of the Barbarossa's present. A tusk rub here, a muddy wallow there, offers a glimpse into its elusive world. Setting up camera traps during the crepuscular hours when the Barbarossa is most active might just offer a chance to capture it on film, providing concrete evidence of its continued existence. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd rate the Moluccan Barbarossa's chances of a comeback at a solid 7 out of 10. If you thought the Barbarossa was elusive, then you may just need to meet the Baji, aka the Yangtze River Dolphin. This freshwater dolphin, often referred to as the goddess of the river, weighs around 500 pounds and measures up to 8 feet in length. The Baji was one of the smallest dolphin species, yet it commanded a significant presence in the Yangtze River ecosystem. Living in the murky, dark waters of the Yangtze, its small eyes that are adapted to low visibility conditions, coupled with its sonar, allowed it to navigate its environment with remarkable precision. The Baji's intelligence was also a defining feature, with studies suggesting complex social structures and communication among individuals. This is believed to have enabled the Baji to adapt to changing environmental conditions and navigate the challenges posed by human activity, such as damming and pollution. The Baji's tragic decline towards extinction can be attributed to a confluence of human-induced factors. Rampant industrialization along the Yangtze River brought about habitat destruction, with damming projects fragmenting the dolphin's once expansive range. Pollution from agricultural runoff, industrial waste, and ship traffic further degraded water quality, compromising the Baji's health and reproductive success. Tragically, it was declared extinct in 2006. While the last confirmed sighting of the Baji was in 2002, sporadic reports from locals and fishermen have since come to light, suggesting that remnant populations of this enigmatic species may still linger in the Yangtze's murky depths. In 2016, amateur investigator Song Kui claimed to have witnessed the unmistakable silhouette of a Baji leaping from the river, sparking renewed hope among conservationists and a piece of news I was super excited to hear. In fact, I wanted to go to China to try and find it myself. If I was to try and find the supposedly extinct cetacean, I'd employ a combination of traditional survey methods and cutting-edge technology, like I usually do. Sonar equipment could scan the riverbed for acoustic signatures indicative of dolphin activity, while underwater ROVs could visually survey potential habitats inaccessible to humans. Given the Baji's preference for remote, low-visibility environments, such as deep river channels and oxbow lakes, targeted searches in these areas would likely yield the best results. Local knowledge and collaboration with riverine communities would also be invaluable as fishermen and residents familiar with the Yangtze nuances could provide crucial insights and potential sighting locations. So when I did try and go into the Yangtze River to search for this dolphin in 2019, we had a pretty funny instance where I, uh, I filled out all the paperwork and whenever we launch one of these expeditions you have to fill out all this paperwork to submit a proposal to the Chinese government to say that we were coming there to search for the Yangtze River Dolphin. Now what's really funny is uh, I made a huge mistake. So I said on the, uh, on the application, I said we'd like to come and search for the, the Baji, the Yangtze River Dolphin. Uh, which went extinct due to over pollution of the river. Well, I got a message back that was like, no pollution here, everything good, permit denied. And I was like, well, that's definitely not true. And so sadly, we were, we were denied the ability to go to China and actually search for this animal. But given the small tidbits of information that we do have 
and the idea that this animal is incredibly intelligent and could possibly move up the river into the headwaters of the Yangtze, I'd give this one on a scale of one to 10, about a four out of 10 of still being extant. Now, deep in Myanmar, there's a swamp so treacherous, locals whisper it swallows those who enter. But could this very fear be the key to a stunning secret? The survival of a duck with a pink head? Yeah, that's right, the pink-headed duck. This beautiful bird used to call the waters of the Gangetic Plains in India and the secluded riverine swamps of Myanmar home. Habitat destruction and human encroachment are believed to have decimated its population in the early 1900s, although its last confirmed sighting was way back in 1949, it still hasn't been declared extinct yet. In fact, it's currently listed as critically endangered. Now let's talk about why I believe the pink-headed duck could still be out there hidden away in the remote corners of its historical range. Locals in Myanmar, deeply connected to the land, often speak of fleeting encounters with this elusive avian gem, describing its distinct pink feathers. There's not a lot of animals out there with bright pink feathers, so it could only really be one thing. But what really piques my curiosity are the bird's unique characteristics and ecological adaptability. With its deep diving capabilities and preference for swampy habitats, the pink-headed duck is perfectly situated to thrive in the secluded wetlands and marshes where humans seldom tread. And let me tell you, as someone who's been to Myanmar, I can tell you how bad and difficult and treacherous that environment really is. These remote, unexplored regions offer sanctuary for a species that prefers solitude and seclusion. Despite decades of scientific exploration, our understanding of its behavior and habitat preferences remain limited. In 2017, the GWC, Global Wildlife Conservation, which is now rewild, sent scientists into the area after numerous locals suggested the bird may still spend time around the Indagui Lake in Myanmar. However, the bird eluded the searchers as they were not granted access. The inaccessible swamps of northern Myanmar are feared by locals, as many who enter never return. Trust me how I know that, because when we went there, we witnessed a poor young man get ripped to shreds by a crocodile, and we were able to save his life, but this was just one of a very few group of people that lived in these swamps of Myanmar, and it is, it is a treacherous, treacherous place. And you know what? That's not a bad thing for the pink-headed duck. That fear might just be adding to the mystery of the pink-headed duck's potential existence. I mean, think about it. If hardly anyone can venture into these remote, secluded marshlands, who's to say what could be lurking in the shadows? So yeah, the fact that it's practically impossible to explore these area only fuels my belief that the pink-headed duck could still be out there evading detection and enjoying its solitude in the heart of the swamps. And you know what? It's a bit like deja vu with the pink-headed duck. It reminds me of the Rio Afaporis caiman down in Colombia. This crocodilian species was believed to be extinct or at least hidden away in the heart of the jungle. The region was like a fortress, inaccessible to scientists in the outside world, but thanks to the presence of FARC rebels. But guess what? When we finally got the green light to go in and search for it, we hit the jackpot. There it was, alive and well, thriving in its secluded haven. So who's to say that the same couldn't happen with the pink-headed duck? And for this reason, on a scale of one to 10, I rate the pink-headed duck's chances of still being out there at a solid eight out of 10. Next up, a 25 foot long alien-like creature with a literal saw for a nose, the large tooth sawfish. Now this majestic member of the ray family can be found in tropical and subtropical coastal waters more or less across the globe. Its namesake comes from the fact that it is adorned with 44 equally spaced large razor sharp teeth along its rostrum. I mean, just look at this thing. Growing up to a length of over 25 feet and weighing 1300 pounds, this creature is a true alien of the seas. However, rampant overfishing and habitat loss have pushed this species to the brink of extinction while it's believed to be functionally extinct in the US since its last sighting in Florida back in 1961, there's still reason to believe it might still roam the depths of our ocean, and there's some hope. Reports from avid divers shared over pints at local watering holes like the Florida Keys Brewing Company and Sharky's Pub tell of encounters with aggressive sawfish nearly 20 feet long. These reports, while anecdotal, 
fuel the hope that perhaps the large tooth sawfish still persists in the US, evading human eyes, but not disappearing entirely from our oceans, at least not in the US. We know that the large tooth sawfish is still out there in small populations in places like Northern Australia, but the fact that it hasn't been seen since the 60s in the US leads us to believe that it's extinct here, but leaves me with the hope that it could still be around. Some speculate that the large tooth sawfish, which was once abundant in the US, may have been migratory, with potential breeding populations finding sanctuary in the Gulf of Mexico. So while sightings may be scarce in their former range, like the Florida Keys, these creatures could potentially still exist in lesser explored regions, essentially places where humans aren't. While official records may paint a grim picture of extinction, there's a compelling argument to be made for the continued existence of the large-toothed sawfish in the Americas. The whispers among divers, coupled with scientific theories of migratory patterns and potential breeding grounds, offer a small, but still a glimmer of hope for the survival of this alien creature, and I truly hope it's still out there. And because it's not really an extinct species, but once again my favorite, a lost species, I absolutely think that in our lifetime, we are going to see the resurgence of the large tooth sawfish right here in the US in a small, fragmented population. And because of this, I'm gonna give this one a solid nine out of 10 of popping back up in the USA. So there you go, five more extinct animals that I believe could still be out there. What do you guys think? Do you think any of these creatures are still out there? Do you think I'm missing the mark? You know what, I have a list, just so you guys know, of 1,600 believed to be extinct animals that I actually think could still be out there. So let me know down below in the comments if there are any of these animals that you'd like me to go over, any of these creatures that you think could still exist that I might be, uh, might be missing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel. It helps me put out content that you guys all love and it helps me keep talking about my favorite thing, extinct animals.